Good morning and happy Sunday, everybody. I hope everybody has got their uh, foot soap water with them. Would anybody like to share anything about their uh, recent meditation experience?
Good morning, Patty. How are you? Very good. It's been really nice and we able to have silence. I can barely hear Patty. I don't know if it is only me or if it's the same for um, others. It's probably just my phone. It's our phone. Oh. I have to put it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it's been good. Thank you. And um, we've been practicing. It's been really good. I couldn't tell what she was uh, saying. I hope all good in the meditation space. There is a quotation that uh, I just want to read to you. Reese. Um, at the seminar in December, in the room that I was in, this quotation was there. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. And I thought this was very profound and so up to the point for many a things in life. Just wanted to share that. And uh, in a couple of minutes from now, we will get started. We can't believe already we are into second month of this year. Time just seems to be flying by. I am uh, located in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, just recently we are uh, setting up our... Thanks, Patty, for uh, typing that out. Um, so in Atlanta, we set up our new meditation center, released it for a an year. And this is the first time a meditation center has been located in the mall, in North Point Mall in Alpharetta, Georgia. We have next to Cage Dwellers, one of the stores that is now our meditation center. Our weekly meditation has started, but keeping it open for new people, we are just waiting on our... Uh, fire marshal uh, giving us a pass and then uh, getting a business certificate to get it open for uh, new people. It is a blessing. I've been in Atlanta since 2005. So it was really challenging to find something in our budget uh, which will meet all of our criteria. So I'm really glad that uh, after all these years, finally it worked out. Here it is a bit gloomy today, the weather. I just went uh, into my backyard with a cup of coffee. Um, it was It's around 42 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind made it feel in the 30s. And then I came into the house. It felt so warm and cozy. Sometimes uh, I think it's these small things, the joy of, you know, Having a warm place to come in when you're cold, um, having a meal to eat when you are hungry. They just feel you, make you feel so contented. I, uh, those of you who have meditated with me in the past, you know that uh, usually in summer, we do ice pack on the liver and with foot soak. That seems to work very well for me. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. Today, I just felt that I needed it. So I have uh, gotten my ice pack. But feel free to use your discretion. Or later at any time when you're meditating, if uh, thoughts are bombarding you, you are stressed out about a lot of things, try foot soaking with ice pack on the liver. Mm -hmm. 
and see if that is better for you. Everybody wants to be very, very quiet today. Good morning, Didi. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I've got my bucket ready and I'm waiting for... <laughs> I'll put sure. it. That's and good. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, doing the 21 days. Sorry, you are? I said I'm following the 21 days. I'm Oh, the... okay. Yeah, that's an awesome program. I even, though I have been a practitioner for 30 years now, I myself want to find time to do that. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. And... Yes, definitely. And the, uh, want and to the do that. review that we, not review, but... Uh, when the yogis tell their their journey, it's very interesting and it's very encouraging. Yeah. One thing which is very difficult for a lot of us to accept, nevertheless, it happens to be always true, is uh, uh, life keeps throwing a lot of things at us, but uh, eventually you realize that uh, everything happens for a reason. But you get to know the reason only in hindsight, only after you have crossed, yeah. never in the moment. Definitely. And it's a beautiful uh, meditation and beautiful uh, system that is uh, so helpful to us um, physically, mentally, um, you know, um, spiritually. Yeah. And also our day-to-day encounters of um, stress and it, it is just amazing i'm very happy that i um, learned about this really glad uh, queen we'll just give it another few minutes and then we'll get started if anybody you do this sunday morning this a uh, program, uh, this intermediate level uh, meditation happens every Sunday morning, yes. Mm -hmm. I have been teaching it monthly one Sunday since its inception in 2018. And what time? This is the same current time. It's okay. always been the same time. 9.45 a.m. Eastern till 11 Eastern. The 9.45 to 10 is settling down time. 10 is when we start and 11 is when we end. It's all Eastern time that I'm telling. So if you are in a different time zone, you'll just need to translate it to your time zone. Um, I attend uh, um, the very morning, 7.15 in the morning meditation mm -hmm. with Linda and Tracy. Oh, that's very cool. I met them in the Florida <laughs> seminar this year for the first time. I think they are very, very old uh, yogis. Yes. They have a lot of one-on-one -on -one experiences with Sri Mataji. Mm -hmm. I think they have met Mataji too. Yeah. yeah. And you are from India? Uh, yes, I was born and raised in India at uh, I got married at the age of 23 and then went to South Korea, Europe and uh, landed up in the U.S. I've been in the U.S. since 2005. I have been in Atlanta, Georgia since then. Beautiful. So I have had the privilege of uh, joining collective meditations in person at a lot of collectives worldwide, which is a blessing. Really? Even back, back home in India, uh, I used to go to Delhi. I worked in Bangalore. My mom lived in Hyderabad. So uh, I I used to go to all three collectives for pujas and such. And 
uh, before stepping out of India, I think I was able to go to Ganpat Pule twice. Ganpat Pule is a place on the, the seashores of Maharashtra in the hometown of uh, Sri Mataji, where every December they have a meditation seminar. It's a beautiful experience. Um, and thereafter, I traveled to South Korea and Europe and then came to the U.S. Mataji lived in uh, Italy too by a river, right? Yes. Yeah. We, there is a, a Sahaj Yoga meditation center uh, and Sri Mataji's house is now the uh, center there. And then a lot of international seminars happen in Kabela too. I have my uh, I have not been there, but I went to the Rome Center when I was working in Rome, but I couldn't go to Kabela yet. It's Kabela. How do you spell that? C A B E L L A. Oh, C A B E L A. Okay. Yeah. I did have an opportunity to visit Mataji's home in uh, New Jersey. That's good. I haven't been there. I have been to a couple of other places, but not to the New Jersey ashram yet. But uh, uh, at some time, perhaps it will happen. They had a intermediate seeker meditation or seminar, one day seminar at that place last year. Yes, uh, I think not last year, but the year before I I went. Mm. And I got diagnosed with cancer. Um, so for last year, I was um, not able to um, meditate because of my health. So now that it has, um, you know, the treatment has finished, I joined again. I hope that uh, you recover well and are able to meditate. Thank there you. are uh, a few people that I know who are Sahaj Yogis and who have recovered completely. Thank you so much. It's all Mataji's doing. Yeah. And your own faith and uh, unwavering will. That makes a lot of difference. It does, it does. And it was it was just when I went to Mataji's home, when I came back, it like I got diagnosed very early in that. So which was a blessing. That's very good. Each one of our journey is pretty unique and it is uh, it teaches us or it brings forth what is benevolent for us and I think nobody can better understand or comprehend it than we ourselves if we choose to uh, look at it with an unbiased uh, view. Yes, yes. So it is now 10. Let us get started. Let's okay. go down to Mother Earth and then take a bandhan. Happy, 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 Mother Kundalini one. Happy, 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 Mother Kundalini one. Two. Happy, 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 Mother Kundalini one. Two, three. Mooladhara. Sadhishthana Nabi Void Anapata Vishyati Akiya Sahasrana
let us clear our left channel, left hand on the lap, right hand on mother root. Mahakali Bhairava Mantra. Om Vameva Sakshat Shri Mahakali Bhairava Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devye Namu Namaha Right clearance. Right hand on the lap, palm facing sky. Left hand, palm facing your face, fingers to the sky. Mahasaraswati Hanumana Mantra. Om Dvameva Sakshat Shri Mahasaraswati Hanumana Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namuna Maha Let's bring the left hand to the lap. Mahalakshmi Ganesha Mantra for the central channel. Om Dvameva Saksha Shri Mahalakshmi Ganesha Saksha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namunamaha Let us vibrate our hot soap water by taking the Samudra Devta Mantra. Om Dvameva Saksha Shri Samudra Devata Saksha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namon Namaha Shri Samutra Devita, please absorb away anything that does not serve me and help me grow deeper in my state of meditation. Let us now foot soak while listening to Shri Ganesha Atharvafus. श्री गणेश अथर्व शीर्षम ओम नमस्ते गणपतये त्वमेव प्रत्यक्षम तत्वमसि त्वमेव केवलम कर्तासी त्वमेव केवलम धर्तासी त्वमेव केवलम हर्तासी त्वमेव सर्वम Kalvidam Brahmasi Tvam Sakshad Yaksham Tatvamasi Tvameva Kevalam Karta uh, Meena, do you need me to try to play from here? Are you having connected? Twameva Kevalam Hartasi Twameva Kevalam Hartasi Twameva Sarvam Kalvidam Brahmasi Twam Saksha Datma Sinithyam Ritam Vachmi Satyam Vachmi 
अवक्तारम अवश्रोतारम अवदातारम अवधातारम अवानोचा नम वशिष्यम अवपश्चात्ताप अवपुरस्ताप अवोत्तरात्ताप अवदक्षिणात्ताप अवचोर्ध्वात्ताप अवाधरात्ताप सर्वतो माम पाहि पाहि समंतात त्वम वाङ्मयस्त्वम चिन्मयः त्वम आनंदमयस्त्वम ब्रह्ममयः त्वम सच्चिदानंदा द्वितीयोसि त्वम प्रत्यक्षम ब्रह्मासि त्वम ज्ञानमयो विज्ञानमयोसि सर्वम जगदिदम त्वत्तो जायते सर्वम जगदिदम त्वत्तस्तिष्ठति सर्वम जगदिदम त्वैलयमेष्यति सर्वम जगदिदम त्वै प्रत्येति त्वम भूमि रापो नलो नीलो नभ त्वम चत्वारि वाक्पदानि त्वम गुणत्रयातीतः त्वम देहत्रयातीतः त्वम कालत्रयातीतः त्वम मूलाधारस्थितोसि नित्यम त्वम शक्तित्रयात्मकः त्वाम योगिनो ध्यायन्ति नित्यम त्वम ब्रह्मा त्वम विष्णुस्त्वम रुद्रस्त्वम इंद्रस्त्वम अग्निस्त्वम वायुस्त्वम सूर्यस्त्वम चंद्रमास्त्वम ब्रह्मभूर भुवस्वरोम गणादिम पूर्वमुच्चार्य वर्णादिम तदनंतरम अनुस्वार परतरह अर्धेन्दुलसितम तारेन रिद्धम एतत्तव मनुस्वरूपम गकार पूर्वरूपम अकारो मध्यमरूपम अनुस्वारश्चांत्यरूपम बिंदुरुत्तररूपम नादसंधानम सग्निता संधि सैशा गणेश विद्या गणक ऋषि निचरित गायत्री छंदह गणपतिर देवता ओम गं गणपतये नमः एकदंताय विद्महि वक्रतुंडाय धीमहि तन्नो दंती प्रचोदयात एकदंतम चतुरहस्तम पाशमंकुशधारिनम रदंचवरदम हस्तैर बिभ्राणम मूषकद्वजम रक्तम लंबोदरम शूर्पकर्णकम रक्तवाससम रक्तगंधानुलिप्तांगम रक्तपुष्पै सुपूजितम भक्तानुकंपिनम देवम जगत कारणमच्युतम आविर्भूतम च सृष्ट्यादौ प्रकृते पुरुषात् परम एवं ध्यायति यो नित्यम सयोगी योगिनाम वरह नमो व्रातपतये नमो गणपतये नमः प्रमथपतये नमस्ते स्तु लंबोदरायै कदंताय विघ्ननाशिने शिवसुताय श्री वरद मूर्तये नमो नमः साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माताजी श्री निर्मला देव्यै नमो नमः Let's wash our feet with a clean bowl of water. Flush this out of the meditation.
Let's be in silent meditation for a couple of minutes. Attention on the Sahasrara. If thoughts bombard you, postpone them for the duration of your meditation. One Before one thought dies down, another picks up. They go as waves. So in between two thoughts, there is always a small gap. With the practice of meditation, we increase the gap where the mind is silent and can draw on the energy from all around us, from the cosmos. I feel a slight discomfort on the left agya, which is physically located on the right side of the forehead. So let's go ahead and clear it by rotating your hand from outside to inside and taking the Sri Mahavira Mantra. Om Tvameva Saksha Sri Mahavira Saksha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Deve Namunama our hand on the forehead and forgive ourselves and others. Mother, I forgive myself and I forgive everybody. Mother, I forgive. You can take the hand, put it at the back of your head and take the Sri Maha Ganesha Mantra. This is for the back Agnya. Mother, please forgive me for any mistakes that I might have made. Om Tvameva Saksha Sri Maha Ganesha Saksha Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devayana While saying Om and observe how the sound travels from the bottom of your spine from Uladhara to Sahasrara. Let's do that three times while raising our Kundalini with the right hand. And left hand is still on the lap. Left is for desire, right is for action. 
So left hand palm open on the left thigh. Oh. Oh. In this state of mental silence, let us listen to a talk of Sri Mataji. This was played for our collective meditation yesterday and I thought it was beautiful. Somehow I had never encountered it in the past. It's a very ancient traditional understanding about the spirit. But when we are seeking the truth, we have to understand that truth is to be known through our ascent and through our awareness, that is our central nervous system, not through mental projections. For example, what just now has been described to you is the knowledge of the roots. The West has in developed and developed because of extroversion like a tree. It has reached its climax now, but it must find out its roots. If the tree is not sustained and nourished, by the roots, it is quite possible that it will topple down in no time. So we have to learn, I think, from India so much about the tree, but perhaps you have to learn something from us about the roots. When we are developing outside too much, the biggest problem I face is that people take easily to something that is new. They are charmed by anything that is out of the way, something new. But, what's your play? But in Sahaja Yoga, when you see it clearly, you will understand that it is not a today's thought, it is not a hundred-year thought, but it's a very ancient, traditional understanding about the Spirit. While in the West, people get very much enamored by things which are absolutely new, for example, hundred years back. It's very surprising how they do not see something beyond and they want to try everything that is new, which is not traditional. For a country like India, hundred years is yesterday, that you can understand. So if you have to understand anything about the spiritual, tradition of India, you have to go far back. And you'll be amazed that gradually everything evolved 
and whatever came in its way, like tantrism and all that was thrown away. Then again it came up, revived, and again it came up. But about hundred years back, we had horrible people coming down who have introduced absolutely ideas of no value to your ascent, but maybe for your descent. Like the other day, I went to Pune, there are some Western educated Indians, and their age must be about forty years to fifty years, not very old. And I found that they were all suffering from horrible diseases, from diseases like high blood pressure, paralysis, kidney trouble, liver trouble, cirrhosis, all kinds of diseases they had. And when I asked them, how did you develop these diseases? They said, we had a guru and he told us a path by which we went and we got into this job. I said, what was the path? What did he tell you? They said, have you heard about Shakti path? I said, I've never heard. Where did you read it? Where is it written? Nowhere in the tradition it is written, in no book, nowhere. No, there was one book seventy year old back. Just imagine seventy years, what is seventy years? I'm sixty-three, so what is seventy years? One gentleman wrote a book, his name was Vishnu Teeth. I got the book and I was amazed at that book. All that was written was something out of the blue, Arunopai, Tarnupai, some words which are not even Sanskrit words. And then this word Shaktipat was there and it was written that when sometimes you get the Shaktipat, people start jumping like frogs. And with all the brains intact, people accepted such absurd statements that you just take out your clothes, you start dancing, you start jumping, you behave like a frog. Are we going to become frogs? <laughs> Use your brains. Are we going to take out our clothes like primitive people? What are we going to do? What are we supposed to get? This evolution up to human level is all right. What is beyond that? What is said? In any book whatsoever, take it Bible or go to Quran or go to any book, Zen, go to Buddhist uh, books of uh, Dhammapad or you go to any other shastras like Vedas, they have talked of Kundalini all right. up to the time of Kabira, which was hardly sixteen hundred years, up to the time of Ganeshwara was hardly twelve hundred years. Nobody said these things about Kundalini that it makes you jump like a frog or it burns you off or it gives you blisters. No one has said that. But people believed into these things blindfolded because Perhaps they didn't know they were naive. And it was something new that the Indians believed into, they thought it's coming because that book was translated in English language and when it comes from England, then more acceptable to westernized Indians than it is from India. And most untraditional the whole thing was. But as a result, they were all sick people, very, very sick. And the Guru da has died now but made a big money, very big money himself. Nowhere in the books is written that a guru takes money or lives on the earnings of the disciples, nowhere. And if he does that, then it is regarded as a person who is not a guru, who is a devil. Any book you open, there's a description, Guru Nanaka has described these gurus so elaborately that we cannot have 
any doubts about these people who are giving you such funny new ideas. All kinds of ideas are working out in the West. I'm amazed how people have accepted them. The traditional idea is the same as told by Christ to Nicodemus. <clears throat> he said that you are to be born again to understand God. As, as Sri Krishna has said that you have to be the Spirit, otherwise you will not know what God is. You have to be the Spirit. Buddha went to this limit that he said, don't talk of God. Don't talk of anything, just talk of Self-realization. Just get to your Spirit. That's what He wanted to delimit human beings who just become so ego-oriented that they start thinking they are gods and things like that. And Zen, Viditama, who started the Zen system, went even further or lower than that. He said, no. Don't talk even about the Spirit, just talk about thoughtless awareness. That's the first step, let us get it. All Zen uh, expressions in art, in garden, in anything that they have is to create that state within us so that we become thoughtlessly aware. It's not thoughtlessness, but it is thoughtlessly aware. That is, when one thought rises, it falls off, and another thought rises, it falls off. We live on the cusp of the future and the past, but to be in the present, we have to be in the center. For that, Kundalini awakening is the solution. Holy Ghost now. No one knows what is Holy Ghost. They make a dove, because perhaps the dove must have brought the olive branch to show the peace, so they might have used that symbol, it's all right. But nothing more than that, nobody knows what is the Holy Ghost. Even the Archbishop of Canterbury doesn't know. Yes, he was asked, I saw it with my own eyes, I could not have believed it. On the television he was asked, what do you think about Holy Ghost? He says, I'm agnostic. <laughs> The person who was interviewer is a well-known person. He asks him, uh, then what are you doing here? He said, I'm doing my job, as you are doing your job. So he was quite happy. He said, yes, yes, I'm also doing my job, you are doing your job. <laughs> now the problem is that the way they organize religion, they really try to bolt Christ into churches. This is the biggest problem of all such religions which are organized. Ultimately, they all end up as fanatics or something like uh, charismatic movements where people start becoming like possessed or Seventh-day Adventist sort of people or what you call the other ones are. Uh, Pentecostalists and all that sort, Rastafarians, all sorts. These are not anywhere near Christ. So what we get is a branching off from the religion, is a branch, is a kind of a sect we can call it. And these sects that go on dividing, dividing and ultimately end up into cults. So the sects become cults or maybe that anti-religion things start as cult or anti-culture things starts as cults. So actual happening, that is the Self-realization, is just forgotten. Even there are people who say that we are Self-realization people. And what do they do? They cut the tongue and say, put it back here. Why? Because it is said that when the Kundalini rises, there's a kechari that takes place, that the tongue is pulled back. But when the Kundalini rises then, 
It's like when the car moves, the wheels will move. But before that, if you start moving the wheel, will the car, car move? Will it move? And this Kundalini awakening is a spontaneous happening. It's done by a living force within us. How did we become human beings? What did we do about it? It all happened spontaneously. How much did we pay? To whom did we pay to become human beings? Which guru did that? No one. So the Kundalini awakening has to be a spontaneous happening. But as in evolutionary process, one fish came out, then few ships came, the few fishes came out, and were followed by shoals of fishes. In the same way, one person has to do it. That's a different point. But that you can pay for it is absurd and irrelevant thing. Because when you have to sow a seed, the seed has a power to germinate and the Mother Earth has power to nourish it. That's how it works out spontaneously. You don't pay anything to the Mother Earth or for transforming flowers into fruits. Do we pay to the tree? So you cannot pay, neither can you put in any effort for it. It is just spontaneous. He said, even I would say at the time of Shivaji, who was there about four hundred years back, Ramdasa, Sri Ramdas Swami, who was a great incarnation, I should say, somebody asked him, how much time does it take for Kundalini to rise? He said, that kshana, that moment. But people don't read this, this is not translated. No one knows their names, nobody knows about them. Even Shankaracharya, I don't know. If people have translated him, it was so late. And no one wants to understand Shankaracharya. It's very easy to understand once you become the Spirit. Unless and until you are the Spirit, you can't even understand Christ. Like the theologians now are trying to prove that Christ had no immaculate birth, He had no miracles, and He was another theologian like all these people. They cannot understand that God is beyond this mind. He is the one who has created this mind. And this human mind is a limited factor. If you have to trigger yourself to that unlimited space, you have to go beyond the mind and then you see the mind in a new enlightened way. Now a new theory in England, I don't know if you know that or not, that Christ was just an ordinary human being. They can prove it, they say. How? With your brains, with your arguments, that He never walked on water, that He was not an immaculate conception. This was Mr. Paul who came much later than Christ. When I saw him in the Bible, I said, from where does he come in, this Mr. Paul? <laughs> who is this gentleman? I couldn't recognize him. Because he is the one who is talking something through his hat, as they say. He's not the one who talks like a saint, he does not. He's an organizer. And you know he was an epileptic patient, not only that, but he killed so many Christians. And then he becomes a great leader of Christians and becomes the great writer in Bible. I don't know how he came there. And then Augustine perhaps reincarnated. They have done this mischief. That's why I find many people who come to me, if I start talking about Christ, they walk off. Christ was the Son of God and it can be proved. He was, whether you like it or not. Everything can be proved. Who was Moses can be proved. Now the time has come to prove all these scriptures, all these incarnations, all these prophets. What was the relationship between Christ and Krishna can be understood once you get your realization, without that you cannot understand. 
but theologians can never understand Christ. Christ had said that very rich cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I sometimes feel these intellectuals or theologians can never enter into the kingdom of God. That's the area they cannot enter. You cannot discuss God, you cannot. You have to feel your spirit on your central nervous system. As you can feel something hot and cold, you have to feel those divine vibrations in your being. Unless and until that happens, we are living with falsehood and fraudulent things which are just imposed upon us. Anything can be imposed, people are so vulnerable. Like here I find some image is created, some sort of a funny image is created, everybody tries to be that. Some sort of a, uh, sort of a, uh, I can say, an impression on the mind is given and then people just start following it. Maybe that you do not know what to follow, maybe that you do not know what to find. But still, one must find out one thing. Anybody who says this is true, you go and see his life. You see him. Is he righteous? Is he a pure personality? Is he what he says? Is he a person who can take you to the kingdom of what? Can he awaken the Kundalini within you? If he cannot, why are you with it? Why are you wasting your time and money with such a person? And also see the disciples. Are the disciples who are, what sort of a life they lead? Are they compassionate? Are they knowledgeable? Are they kind? Or the disciples are like mad people, you see, going on the street, singing the song of their gurus. You want to join them? their procession of madness. All these diseases have come because you have tried new methods. All these brain diseases are coming because you have got all the horrible gurus here. It's not what your age is, in India people can be eight years and ninety years, they don't become mad. Why should Americans become mad like that? Because you have got all these gurus here nicely settled down, they are spoiling your psychology, they are working it out. I said this in 1972 and people didn't like it. They said, you better charge some money, Mother, for what you are doing. I said, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> this is what it is. How much are you going to pay me? But they didn't like it. They said, even in England, <laughs> The BBC people told me that an Anglo-Saxon brain cannot understand anything that is free. I said, what about breathing this free air, how much are you paying for that? Everything divine has to be free, God doesn't understand money. This is a fundamental thing you must understand. It's out of your ego, of your money that you think you can purchase God. You cannot. God is what it is. It cannot compromise. Now somebody told me, Mother, don't tell them about thoughtless awareness. I said, why not? An Indian will immediately understand it's called Nirvichar Samadhi, written down in all the books. Why not? Because they will be frightened. I said, then such frightened people cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It is not a compromise. You are not obliging God, the God's divine power is obliging you because you are special people, of course created by God Himself, because you are seekers, you are a special category, because you are seeking beyond, it's God's grace that is going to work it out. People have seen it in their unconscious, despite all the efforts of Paul and Augustine. Because I went to see a church in Venice and I was amazed, they showed all the disciples sitting, twelve of them, and I saw their kundalini on top of their head, like a red thing coming up, and the grace, of course, they have shown Holy Ghost as a dove as usual, but the, the grace is falling upon the heads of these. 
And when they got their realization, they also felt the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. And they started talking in strange languages. That means people think irrelevant language. It is not an irrelevant language they talk. They don't talk an irrelevant language. They talk the language of the chakras. You'll find the Sahaja Yogis do the same. Now, for example, somebody is there, immediately they will know what chakras are catching. They talk in the language of chakras if they say somebody has got an agya, means that person is very ego-oriented. But they won't say it's agya. Or maybe the back agya means he's possessed. They talk the language of the chakras, the subtle centers within us. And when they move their hands, they move the energy on your chakras, on your head, like the disciples of Christ move their hands. As you must have heard that they were making funny gestures and people thought they were mad. But first thing one has to know that you are not to depend on any hearsay or whatever bombastic claims people do. You have to yourself experience it. You have to know that it has worked out in you. You are not to be dishonest about it. You have to be very honest to yourself. You have to feel the experience yourself. No use wasting any more life because this is the last judgment. Your Kundalini is going to judge you. You are going to judge yourself. You are going to correct yourself. You are going to redeem yourself. I will of course counsel you, I will of course comfort you, also redemption one can do, but it is you who has to know each and everything about it. Like now we ha you have heard Danny, what Danny has talked, is very little than what he knows, and even much less than what he can do. In the same way, you should be empowered. The other day, some gentleman interviewed me. He said, Mother, I don't want to be a guru. I said, who wants you to be guru? You are your own guru means you know what is absolute. You have the full discretion to know what is absolute, what is wrong and what is right. How will you know that a person is a saint or not? How will you find out? How will you find if Christ stands before you? Or how will you find out if the Holy Ghost herself faces you? Is there any way of finding it out? No, you do not have. You have not reached that state. That sensitivity has not come into you. So what is happening? Missing is the Spirit. That Spirit has to shine into your awareness by which you feel. And when you ask a question, if it is the truth, you start feeling the cool breeze, like a computer as if the whole being is enlightened and you become the communication of the truth and the absoluteness of Spirit then you can raise the Kindalini of others, like one enlightened light can enlighten another light, but the light which is not enlightened cannot enlighten another light. So you can enlighten other people, you can give them realization. That is happening everywhere and I must say, despite the fact I think five times I've been to New York itself and I don't know why Americans are not so good for Sahaja Yoga. They don't work out. I don't know why, what's the reason, I just still cannot understand. There are so many seekers born in this country. I came in 72. Most of the gurus came after me, perhaps someone or two came earlier. Of course, now they are suffering from the pangs of those gurus, no doubt. But somehow I find Americans are lagging behind. Europe is very fast growing. India is, of course, much more. If I go to India and stay there, even for a year, I'm sure, I can do much, much more. But I don't know why Americans are not trying for the reality. 
Of course, I must say they are great seekers. They are after the truth. They are not frivolous people. I do not know the justification. Why? Americans are very slow-growing Sahaja Yogis. They don't want to have yoga in the real sense. Why? I don't know. Even if they get Realization, they do not practice it and they cannot go deep into it. I cured a man suffering from AIDS. I did. I told him, you have to practice Sahaja Yoga after this. He did not. Again he went back to the same habit and now he's dying. It's that's what it is. When you enter into the Kingdom of God, you have to practice it. You have to settle yourself and establish yourself. If you cannot establish yourself, then you again go like up and down. That's not the way. Only a person of that understanding can get to Sahaja Yoga. Actually, I had decided last year that I'll never go back to America. It's out of my mind. But I know you are seekers and I know you are suffering. I know that you are the ones who want Self-Realization. But you are attacked, you are under attack of the falsehood. So I warn you, please understand that you are not Americans, you are part and parcel of the whole. You have to become that. You talk of peace, you have no peace within. How can you create peace on this earth? It is not the atom bomb that is going to destroy us, it's from within we are going to be destroyed. If you do not get your chakras all right, you'll be faced with all kinds of diseases, all kinds of troubles that are not yet known. So please be careful, I want to warn you, be very careful. You can cure cancer, you can cure AIDS, you can cure all these things, but you have to get to the Spirit. You have to be enlightened with the Spirit. Your chakras are to be cured so that you can cure others' chakras. I request you, all of you who are here, to be serious about it, to understand it's a very serious thing. We are on the verge of a great calamity. I had told about this in 1972. It's on all my tapes I had said that a horrible disease is going to come. Only about, in my second visit I said that brain is going to be affected. But nobody listened to me and when I was on the television they started telephoning to me, Mother, now we are already in it. Yes, they are not by singing songs for them or collecting money for them, you are going to save them, only by becoming the Spirit. That's the only way you can save them. So I would request you to consider it seriously, that even I give you Realization, you should not fritter away, you should respect it, you should ascend. Because I don't take any money, that's what they say, Americans will have no value for this. You can't pay me, I'm sorry to say. You can't pay me. If Americans don't listen to me, Indians are very sensible people. I'll work it out there. Yeah, they are very sensible. They won't go to these fake gurus, none, except for the cities. They run away from there because they're thrown out. They're very sensible, wise people. Through trial and error, through their traditions, they've learned what is the truth is. I don't have to tell them much, they know about Kundalini. I went to the foothill of Himalayas only before coming and there were three thousand people from all villages had gathered and they had written there is going to be Devi Jagra. Devi is the go goddess of Kundalini and she is going to be awakened. They all knew about it, they came, because also it is predicted. Very many years back, thousands of years back, predicted that such a time is going to come when Kundalini is going to be awakened by Bhrugubuni, the pioneer of our uh, astrology. It's complete description of Sahaja Yoga he has given. So they are all waiting for it. You go to any village, you'll get at least six, seven thousand people. Uh, I mean, some people who have been with me in, in India have seen it. I don't have to tell them much, don't have to talk much, they just get it like that. And they settle down is the point. You go to one village, there will be ten villages there, all of them settle down. And every time I go to a new village, all of those people got Realization at the foothill of Himalayas. But I feel concerned 
very concerned. And I hope you will understand that concern and will have that concern for yourself. I would like to have some questions from you, but that doesn't mean you be aggressive with me for nothing at all. I have not come here to sell anything. So please don't be aggressive and waste time of others because some guru says that, that guru says that. If you think some guru is good, you can go away. I have nothing to say. Here, if you have to get something, you are here. Please don't uh, upset everyone else by asking funny questions. Now, if you have any proper questions, please ask me, I am here to answer. Let's meditate for a couple of minutes with the essence of the talk we just heard. We are our own masters. We start with nirvichara samadhi, thoughtless awareness. Head towards nirvikalpa samadhi, doubtless awareness, so that we can finally understand our own true selves and establish and realize the depths of our self-realization, what it means. And the powers that we have, if we are ready to assume. In the state of complete mental silence, let's bow down to Mother Earth, take a bandhan, and as we go about our daily lives, let us try to keep our attention on Sahasrara and then engage in whatever that we need to do and see how that works out differently than if we were to just do things without attention on Sahasrara.
Thank you everybody for joining me this Sunday morning for the meditation and sharing your vibrations with me. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything that I can help answer? And Didi, I just wanted to, um, if you could send it in the email uh, or in the WhatsApp group, the talk that Mother Ji just gave. Sure. I think, Meena, you do share the talk in the intermediate WhatsApp group, right? Deshimataji, yes, Didi, I can share it. Or if you want, I can share in the chat here also. Uh, because the chat, um, once uh, the Zoom is off, I am not able to access it. Okay, I will share it in the group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Joseph. I hope everybody has a great week ahead and happy meditation. Thank you, Aparna. It was beautiful as always. Thank you, Annie. Jashima Taji. Jashima Taji. Have a nice week, all. Have a nice week, everybody. Jashima Taji. Bye bye. Jai Shri Mataji.